Welcome to Introduction to Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Utah. Today we're going to talk about charge and current. We're first going to talk about what these elements are, what are their units, what's their polarity, how are they related mathematically, and we'll review derivatives and integrals, particularly in a graphical way. Charge represented by Q is typically given in coulombs. The charge of a single proton, a positively charged element, E, is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. The charge of an electron is the opposite or the negative of that. Current, represented by I, is given in amps or amperes. Moving charges give us a current. Current moves from positive voltage to negative voltage as shown here. So any time we draw a current, we draw it as an arrow with a plus at the back and a minus at the front. Here's the example that we had of the simple battery that was driving the resistor. The current comes out of the positive part of the battery, see there's the positive, goes to a lower charge voltage like this, and we could show this positively charged current going throughout our circuit. Now what if I hadn't known which way the current was going and I'd actually drawn it backwards? In that case, I would still have drawn my currents as having plus at the back and minus at the front, but when I did my calculation, I would have found that the current that was in here was the negative of the current that I originally calculated. Charge and current are related by derivatives. The current is the time rate of change of the charge. That means that it's the derivative as a function of time. The current, again going from positive to negative voltage, passes charges through a cross-section, and that is the current that you see. It's the moving charges. The charge, on the other hand, is the accumulation that's caused by the current. So we start at the earliest possible time, minus infinity, up to the present time, and we integrate the current. That tells us how much charge was accumulated. So the current from positive to negative voltage goes through a cross-section and dumps its charges into something that it can accumulate them, such as a capacitor. And that's going to tell us how much charge we'll have from a particular amount of current. Let's do an example. Let's suppose that we want to charge a battery. And if we have a battery charger that can put out one amp and we turn it on for one second, we will have dumped one coulomb of charge into our battery. Now remember the two batteries that we had in series? The two batteries were each 12 volt batteries and they could each put out 20 amp hours. When we combined them in series, the two batteries had a sum voltage of 12 plus 12 or 24 volts, but they still could only put out 20 amp hours. What does that mean? It means we could either run 20 amps for one hour or we could run one amp for 20 hours. So how much charge is that? Well, we'd be integrating from the earliest possible time, let's say that's when I turn my, on my device at time t equal to zero, up to the present, and I would run 20 amps for that length of time. So it's 20 t, when you multiply this all out, it's 20 t coulombs. Now how long can that go? These batteries are able to support 20 t coulombs for up to one hour. That's what this looks like. So if we have time across the bottom and charge across the top, it means that in one half hour, we're going to have had 10 coulombs, and in one hour, we're going to have had 20 coulombs. Now what happens after that one hour? Well, it says the battery runs down. The battery is able to provide 20 amp hours of current. So when the battery runs down, there's no additional charge available. And what does the current look like in this case? So let's look at it this way. Here's our charge, and we ran from zero to 20 coulombs, and then it stopped because the battery was dead. Well, the current is going to be the time rate of change of the charge. So it's the time derivative. The time derivative is the slope of this line. What's the slope of the line? It's the rise, 20 coulombs, divided by the run, which is one hour, or it's 20 amps. So here's our 20 amp current, and that goes for one hour. What happens after one hour when the battery goes dead like this? Is there any slope to that line? Nope, the derivative or the slope of that line is zero, so the current is zero. So the current is a constant 20 amps until the battery goes dead and then it stops and the current is zero. So do you really think that's exactly the way this happens when a battery goes dead? What has been your previous experiences with batteries that go dead? Do they work up to their full potential and then suddenly stop or do they sometimes um, get smaller and smaller and then drop off. What do you think is really going to happen with the charge and the current in this case? I'm going to let you work that one out on your own. So in conclusion, we've talked today about what are the charge and current, 
what are their units and polarity, how are they related, and particularly the derivatives and integrals that we can see graphically, particularly in our battery charging application. Now I know you're just dying to know where the picture on the front was. This is a cattle drive at Strawberry River near Heber, Utah, part of the great state of Utah.